Ladies and gentlemen, come on in, grab a seat and I will begin showing you something that you ought to know on JP's Creation Show. Today we're going to be checking out this uh, laser controller with, uh, oh how did they phrase it in the thing, uh, standalone vision assisted laser controller. Uh, that's what... That little guy right there is the camera module, and then it has a lens, a uh, a light ring, which I actually ended up not using because I have a whole boatload of lights inside of there. That might not have been a smart move for me to move that. Hindsight, 2020, all that good stuff. There we go. So, uh, there's a lot of lights inside it already. In fact, uh, here's what it looks like inside the laser. And here's what it looks like with the, uh, the laser camera. So this is what the laser actually sees. And the coolest thing about this is I can uh, see where I'm actively pointing the laser head. And by right-clicking in this camera space, I'm able to move the laser head. That way I can get to specific spots and find my mark points. Uh, and just getting it to this point, turns out, was a giant pain in the butt. Uh, that, it turns out, is because the... Uh, the software that came with it uh, it didn't install correctly because the driver here if you think oh I have an x64 system because it's 64-bit uh, I'll install the 64-bit version nay nay the camera requires the 32-bit version to actually work and if you install the 64-bit version it won't let you install the 32-bit version and there's no uninstaller package here so I either had to restore from a previous uh, backup which I really did not want to do because that's just a pain uh, or find a way to uninstall it. What I found was from Ruida's uh, site, they had the Windows 10 drivers, which actually came packaged with an uninstall bat file. Uh, if you decide to use that, or if you have to, uh, I had to run it as an administrator to get it to actually work, but that's what actually was able to uninstall the bad driver and install the correct one, which was the 32-bit uh, version. After getting that, I was finally able to get the camera to work, uh, and I was ecstatic. And then I went in here to try to uh, do some cutting, and there's no way to import a file or to draw things, and I was... I was super confused on how this program is supposed to work. Turns out, uh, the please create model is very important. That's its uh, entire deal. You need to have a model to actually get things working. Uh, and there's four, I guess, different ways you can... Uh, well, three ways you can make a model, and if you have one already made, the fourth way is to just load one that's already made. Uh, let's start off with the easy one of creating a model based on what the camera sees. So I'm just going to name this one 1. Uh, and from number 1 here, you can no now see we're in this model uh, center pane, uh, and we're in model edit mode. In model edit mode, when you right click, it will drag and do a uh, contour tool, which is neat. Uh, and that's what we have to do on our mark points. Uh, and as you can see, I got a nice clean grab on that. 
the settings uh, right here will affect how this uh, captures. And you can see as I use this smoothing tool, it gets rounder. Uh, the similarity is how close it has to be to count it as a match. The higher that is, the more accurate. And I use less smoothing to capture the good, hard, straight edges better. That way it's uh, quite a bit more accurate. Uh, also the fact that I use uh, multiple marks gives me way more accuracy there. Uh, however, I haven't figured out how to do multiple marks from the create method. I believe the only way to do that is to capture the entire image, which is difficult uh, if the camera is not calibrated perfectly, which mine is not, and I'll show you the problem that that faces so uh, that's done with the splice tool. Uh, in the splice tool, you need to set uh, point number one that is to the uh, outside of the mark point. So I'll set that there and then jog down to set the bottom one, point two, outside on the bottom and then you just hit start and it will jog all the way across and keep capturing image after image and splicing them together like a panoramic image. And it, it is really cool if it were set up a little better uh, as far as the edge details, it might be more useful. And it may be because my camera is mounted at an angle that it doesn't quite work right for me because as you can see I get all of these areas where they're not not quite right and a person can uh, use the update feature inside of the splice tool uh, for instance I'll just run this again real quick oh I have to put it out and normalize it real quick. Do do do, and now it should work. Ha ha. Uh, I don't know why uh, that thing I just had to do. I have to do. I just found that as the one solution that worked. Sometimes it the laser won't uh, proceed with a new operation after it does one of these types until you stop everything and then try to call for the position. After calling for the position, it will then be correct and will start working again. It's a weird issue, but that's the easiest way I found to fix it is that position button. Uh, now that we're in here, I can show you what I meant by updating. For instance, um, let's find a spot that's real ugly. Right here is real ugly. So you see how that is so messed up? If I drag over an area, I can create a section that it will take a picture of when I click update. Of course not. It will require me to do that same thing. And now when I click update, it will capture the image. And when I hit OK, you can see that that one now has that spot correct, but now it's off, and that's that's the big problem that I found with spliced images. So then, uh, with splicing not working, I moved on to option number three, which is uh, to import an image. And with this, I found a couple of hurdles. 
So first I needed uh, the model, which this is the one that I made for my uh, usage, which has a nice uh, bracket that tells me which corner is the origin, and then a couple of uh, squares on the other corners that have these big reference edges that will be easy to align for the machine so it goes fast. And then this one is uh, my initials, and that's essentially my my signature on the pages, which, making the symbols, might as well use something that I find important, right? Yeah. So, seems easy enough. Uh, you make some vectors that you can use. Uh, it requires a bitmap, so you turn those into a bitmap, and then you have to export them and uh, do all of that process and then after you export it you can import it into uh, RD Vision and all of the things need names so we go ahead and name this one three and there we go there is uh, the frame and everything looks good and now I can show you how to do the uh, multiple model setup for these. Uh, I'm using four points because I have four different marks. And whichever one of these you have selected is the one that you're editing currently. So right now I'm on feature number one. And uh, right click and drag just like in the other mode to create your uh, contours and then select feature number two to get feature number two and then select feature number three to grab that and last but not least is feature number four and now that I have all of those I can uh, click on them and it will highlight and then when I'm in the camera view you have to be over one and uh, like this one is feature number two if I had a feature number one selected and I tried to do a match test it will report zero results found because feature number one isn't shown but if I select feature number two it will now find the result give the positions and its rotated degrees that's cool uh, so we now have that set up that's great uh, we still don't have any vectors to cut how do we how do we get any vectors turns out that's hidden inside of the model mode everything is stacked on top of the models which is not very intuitive at all and the way you access it is right here in this one little button you click that boom you now have import tool and all of the drawing tools are now uh, alive uh, so that's that's the trick there you still can't do anything over here in the machine view uh, that side's all completely gimped uh, instead you're stuck using the model side to create the vectors and then to transfer them over uh, I'm going to be importing the ones I already made and I shall start off by uh, showing the issue that I had when I first started being that when you import your file a they never line up just right here and B, with the one where I used the exact same vector and made it into a bitmap and imported it and all of that, uh, for some reason, during the bitmapping, it added extra, uh, or actually it, it reduced the number of pixels, and you could see that it, it changed the size. So the way I figured out how to fix that was to adjust the corner like I did there. And then to resize this, get that, and fidget with it until it was a perfect 
uh, match on these long bars, which I'll show here, is just like that, so that those are in the middle. And I had to go around and do that on all of them to find the perfect size here. And then I went back into Corel and adjusted my vectors uh, and I saved those so I can import these specific vectors into every file and these will be what actually gets printed onto the page and imported uh, and it's it's a pain but that's how I got it to actually work so like I said those ones didn't work with a resized uh, frame I was able to import them uh, in DXF and AI files I found worked the best. Um, and the thing with the files that I found is you can only import colors that are available in this menu. Any other color that you import will be turned into this blue. Uh, so that's kind of a pain. So I just uh, took a screen grab of these and made my own new palette, which is, I guess I have to open it each time. It's kind of a pain, but, but da ba da RD Vision. And voila, there's the colors that I could actually import. So I made those, that way I could import them into here and uh, to actually print these I had to take the that vector and copy and paste it on all of my print pages uh, so that's that's how I got it onto the pages and how I got it there um, then once I have the file imported into RD Vision uh, the size on this one is actually correct, but it still drops it in a slightly misaligned spot. So I have to grab it and move it around to get it in the actual correct spot, which is right there. So now that it is aligned correctly, which we can see at that corner and at this corner one more nudge boop, to make it perfect so there it's aligned it has its marks in place and it has all of the vectors we need to set up the the uh, vector parameters for it to cut and that's hidden right here under work parameters uh, I wish you could drag this window and make these bigger so you could see this whole list at once. You can't. It's very annoying and I I tried for a good 10 minutes to try to get it to change. It doesn't. It's, it's very disheartening. Very disheartening indeed. Uh, I'm stacking these in the order that I want them to cut and I want it to do the orange first, which is these inside cuts, and then the sick green color, which will do uh, dots, and the parameter for the dots means that it will uh, not fire the laser for uh, a third of a millimeter every 10 millimeters, which will create little tabs that just barely hold these pieces in, and these together so that I can easily load them in and out of the laser and keep track of parts. Uh, this purple layer is the last one and it will cut completely out and drop these out of the frame which will be important when I have rollers along here eventually that will feed the pages in and then uh, a conveyor belt under them that will feed them out but that's that's future talk right now we need to cut this so all of our cutting settings are correct so we're good there uh, make sure and yep 
So everything's good there. Now I need to uh, go into the camera and you can see I have feature number one, which I need to have selected here. And I need to have the model that I'm actually using selected, which is this one. Uh, you could leave these just unselected. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them so I know they won't actually mess me up. Uh, model 4 is selected. I'll do a match test. It finds it, and the neat thing is it actually projects it onto the page. And if I were to go over here where I have model uh, feature number two, I mean, and I select feature number two, it'll do the same thing. Uh, and the same works for the bottom feature. Uh, so once, oops, I need to select feature number one again. Once you're sure that it will find it and everything, we need to tell it to actually do its cut test, in which case, it will go to each of the corners, uh, find the feature, match it, and then once that's done and it knows the exact angle, it will actually propagate the file into here and start cutting. So, to do that, we'll hit uh, Cut Test, and I will actually, hang on a second, get this ready. Oop, that's the wrong window that I'm in. I need the laser cutter window. And... Oh, come on, you. Uh, so many camera feeds. There we go. Trying to make this small. That way you can see inside of the laser, and I'm going to open it up. This. Put on my fancy laser glasses, that way I don't get blinded since the cage is open, and we'll go ahead and run this. So I'll start the fan, hope that's not too noisy, and we'll do our cut. There we go. Just have to hit that twice. It's now finding its corners, and once it has them, it propagated. Uh, unfortunately, the camera that's inside won't update, so you just have to watch on the big one. You don't get to see the up-close version, which is disheartening. I really wished that that would have been available in the program, because watching the laser running up close is, like, the cool part. Oh well, though. I got the, uh, the top camera, so we got that top-down view. And as soon as it's done cutting, I'll swap over to uh, this camera. That way you can see it uh, close up. As far as uh, this window goes, the, the blue crosshair is the laser nozzle, and the red crosshair is the camera where its center is aimed. And uh, yeah, just let it do its thing. Alright, it's uh, 
nearing the end of its run. It's doing the middle pieces with a dot, and now it's doing the outline. This one is the cut. As soon as it cuts all the way through, I'll go uh, dislodge it and show it up close in front of the camera so you can get a nice good view of it. But we'll also, uh, after this update, get a nice view of it up close through here. Cool. So, there we go, make that nice and big. And here you can see uh, all of the lines where it actually cut through and all of the tabs where it didn't. And you can see exactly how well it went down the middle of these without me having to manually align it. Uh, with my manual alignment, I was able to get within this range here each time. However, uh, with this, I'll be able to get much closer alignment. Though I have found that due to the fact that the camera is mounted at an angle to the laser, uh, the height that the bed is at makes an extreme amount of difference for it actually being correct. So that is something that I'll have to do more and get more, uh, look more into autofocus systems. Uh, but for now, let's take a nice look at those minifigures. as you can see those all turned out real nice and pretty and I have to say I am pretty happy with how the auto alignment ended up working out on this uh, though there are a couple of issues that I've noticed um, first of all being its problem with uh, failed to get current position which I now realize isn't showing let me see if I can fix that there we go failed to get current position is an error that I get a lot in this program it's I I don't know exactly why because the the current position is always right there I think it's because the program is setting aside a, a protocol and it gets interrupted because it's out of its uh, loop. It's trying to call something that's not there or something. But, eh. Otherwise, the fact that I'm able to move the camera to over a feature and just hit yeah do your thing and it auto aligns that's pretty damn fancy and I mean that's that's what the software selling point was uh, however I should note that it still uh, 
a thing that requires a lot of setup time. It's not a one click and it will keep running for hours yet. The thing I need for that is, in general, more mechanisms inside my laser cutter. For instance, the first one is this bed here. Uh, it, it has... Grab a hold of myself. Um, it has this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, and one up there. Uh, those are Acme threads, which can rotate and raise and lower the bed. I can lower it down, and I made a conveyor belt that I've posted a couple of videos on. I'm still working on it to get the, uh, the stepper controller changed out so that I can actually control it through the software, which, as it turns out, is pretty simple since there's all of the feed controls. And by just using the feed controls, I can hook that up to it and it will actually work the conveyor belt. Uh, the part that I'm not sure on yet is a feeding mechanism that will actually drop a page into the right place and to have a stack of pages that are ready to go. And another thing I want to build into that, which I'll probably have to make a custom program, is to have a barcode on the page that gets scanned as it's fed in, which will then open the right file and set everything up so that it's ready to go. However, uh, the hassles of getting files imported and having to align them manually when you uh, actually import it right here. That's a big catch. Uh, one that I'm not sure how to actually solve. So I'll work on that sometime for now. Uh, yeah, if you ever dip your toes into the CCD driven uh, vision laser cutting pool with the RD Works uh, controller, which for reference, the one I'm using is this one, the RDV6442G controller. Uh, this specific one is the one that has this program. I honestly don't think this program is the best out of the other ones that I've seen, including ones from this company. Uh, however, it's the one that actually works with the controller. I also have one that works with the camera, but won't talk to the controller for the laser, and another one that will run the controller, but won't read the camera. It's, it's what you get when you buy things from China, but, ah, this, uh, This part works, so that's what I care about. Anyway, hope you have a good day. Bye.